Let's just remain standing just a moment for prayer. How many like to be remembered tonight before God? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we are so glad that you answer prayer. So glad to find after many years meeting the people from way back in 46 and 47 still healed when they were dying with cancer, crippled in wheelchairs, blind, couldn't see. And here they are here shaking my hand saying, Brother Branham, I was crippled, I was blind, I was given up with cancer, and I've never had a sick day since. Oh, Lord, we know that could only be your grace to them. We're so happy for this, and we pray, God, that others that are suffering today will remember that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray that you'll bless us tonight as we um, fellowship around the written word, that the glory of God might come into our midst. We're so glad to hear the results of last night's meeting, receiving the Holy Ghost and being saved. Oh, Lord, how we thank you for these things. Pray now that you'll bless us in the further part of the service as we wait on thee. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> it is such a privilege to have a nice audience like this to speak to, and, and it makes it so easy for you to, to believe God when these uh, takes place like this. Now, I've been for a, a few nights preaching and, and just uh, uh, the gospel, because I think if a, if a person is healed, if they live very long, they'll probably get sick again. But if you're saved, that's eternal. You have eternal life. And it's so getting so late in the evening lights that I feel that one great thing is needed most of all, that's salvation. And divine healing is merely, a, just like uh, Brother Bosworth used to say, divine healing is a bait that you put on a hook. The fish doesn't see the hook. He just takes the bait and gets the hook. So that's the way it is. Uh, people see the, the supernatural, the phenomena of, of supernatural, God healing the sick. And then uh, they, they reach for that, and the first thing you know, they... They, first thing you know, they're right in the arms of the Lord Jesus with great faith to believe. And, and it, uh, then they become a Christian and have eternal life. Now, a great percent of our Lord's ministry, about 80% of it, or better, I think it was, it's estimated about 80% of his ministry was divine healing. So he did that to catch the eyes of the multitude and also to show that he was their Messiah. He showed them Messiah's sign to say that they... Or Messiah. Now, last night, I believe Brother Argenbright asked the audience about how many would like to continue on in, in preaching services, and, or how many would like to go and have this healing service, and I think about oh, just a very small percentage of them for the healing services. But, um, however, if we'll open our hearts to God, God will do it anyhow. See, Amen. we just see it like that. I'm a little tired tonight. I've been... I have anywhere from one to three services a day, you know, so at the time I get here, I'm pretty near wore out again to start. So I was up at the old Pisgah church this afternoon, and, or the Pisgah home, whichever it's called, and I tell you, we had a glorious time. Uh, I found out that some of the old timers off of Azusa Street is up there yet in that church worshiping. The old Azusa Street, I seen them old women and men sitting there. I just want to get my arms around and hug them. You know, they, they look so sweet. I think a, a real young child or an old person, you know, they seem to be helpless the second time. And I, I really, uh, I like to get with a young person and try to stir them on the right road and then get to the old person and find out how many ditches he's crossed and how he crossed them and then I know how to cross them when I get there. So, so I like young and old and in between too. <clears throat> like everybody. I, I can say that from my heart. If I knew tonight that I had an enemy, I may have, I perhaps have, but if I do, I don't know just who it is. If it was, I sure wouldn't go to preaching that I went first and made that right and see if I could get straightened up. Because we're not supposed to have anything against anyone or if anything we can do, let no one have anything against us. 
See? And now, if and they don't say, if you have ought against a brother, but if the brother has ought against thee, see, you go to him. See? If he has the ought. And that way, while we live peaceful, uh, Brother Gold here, a precious boy, sometimes someone says, Why, what's the success of your service, Brother Brenham? Of course, it's Christ. How do you hold up so and just keep going night after night? My boys, the, the people that are with me, this boy here goes sometimes days without even eating, laying on his face, crying to God for help for me. Now, God just can't turn that down. See, Amen. my wife at home, my children, my loved ones, people, my friends, fast and pray. There's a success. See, every one of us, all of us can't preach and all of us, some of us can't do one thing or another, but we can all do something and that helps out. You see, just like this watch here, it's got a, a hand on it, it tells time. I wouldn't know how many times that little thing switched back and forth in there to tell what time it was the hand tells. But if that little wheel hadn't been jumping back and forth like that, it, 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 it wouldn't be any hand here to make any time, see? I wouldn't know where it was at. And if there wasn't a winding spring to wind that little thing up there, why, it wouldn't be jumping back and forth, see? So we, we, everything has to work together. Right. All the church has to pray and all the laity has to pray, the deacons and the trustees and the pastor, and all together we come into the presence of God like that is one great unit. See, now, say, for instance, um, that piano will make a sound. How do I know? How do I know to make a sound? Well, I believe it will. That's my faith. Now, what would you do to make a sound on that piano? My finger would have to touch it. All right, now, first thing, my head, my mind has to think of it. My heart has to tell me whether it will or not. That's my faith. Now, say, my finger, it's a great thing. My eye, that's the prophetic side, the scene. Now, if I just sat and looked at that piano, I'd say, well, it'll play, but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make it. Now, see, I've got to make my feet's got to work. Now, why my feet say, well, I'm not the eye, so I'm just not going to do anything about it. <laughs> well, my, my feet says, I'll take you over there. All right, here we go. <laughs> my feet taking me over. Now, now I'm here, I'm over here. Well, my eye's still looking, but it, it, it can't touch the key. Feet says, well, I don't touch the key, but it takes the finger, see? Uh, and see, if the, if the nose say, I will, that won't help. The eye say, I'll try to hit it, won't help, see? It got to have my finger. So with everything working together, I have, see? That's it. Now, what is faith? How many senses are there to the human body? Five. See, taste, feel, smell, hear. Is that right? Well, now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you do not see, taste, feel, smell, hear. Is that right? It's the sixth sense. If I had another week, I'd preach on some of those things. The sixth sense, or in a healing service, rather. Now, it's just like here. Come here, brother. Now, let me show you. Have you ever heard people say seeing is believing? How many ever heard it? Oh, you've heard. I'm Missouri. You know, you got to show me. And um, now there's a man standing before me. He's got brown hair, wearing kind of a brown-looking suit, brown tie, with a white shirt on. How many believe that? Boy. See? Well, now, I've got one sense that declares in there. That's my sight. I step back just a little bit. All right? Now, it's impossible for me, my sense of sight to say he's there. But I know he's there now just as well as I know I'm looking at him. Why? I can't see him. You want to argue with me he's not there? <laughs> uh, you say, uh, you might have got Brother Buntain up. Oh, no, 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 no. It ain't Brother Buntain, it's Brother Roy, Brother Roy Borders. How do you know it is? You just got to hold a man's hand. You haven't switched man on me. He's got a real wide wedding band on. <laughs> see, and I know that's him. See? <laughs> so I, I know that's... Now, I cannot see him, but yet I know he's there just as well as if I was looking at him. So seeing isn't believing, is it? No, no. Uh, not this time. Certainly not. Because feeling is the believing. Is that right? Well, now, see now, what is, thank you, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the direct evidence of things you do not see, taste, feel, smell, or hear. See? That's it. You say that shirt's white? Well, what if I tell you that shirt's red? You'd say, wait a minute, Brother Brandon, that shirt's white. 
Well, I said, no, it's red. Well, now, the only way it could be, could it be possibly could be red? Yes. If you was colorblind, it might be red, see. So seeing would be believing it, see. But your faith, when faith is positive, you can be not be too positive. Like if you're sitting in a, uh, given a, a trial, in a trial, and you look through a window and see an accident, it's hard for them to take your evidence because you might have had an optical illusion. You've never seen it that way, see. And sometimes you think you're positive right. Did you ever go down the road and see a mirage on the road? looks just exactly like mm, it's water. I read in a paper here some time ago where a bunch of ducks thought it was, was water. must have seen through their eyes and lit right on the road. It killed them all, see, because it was a mirage. Many times human beings see a mirage. And they think, oh, this is just it. Wind up killing themselves. See, see them out in the desert when they out in there and prospecting. They get out of water and their canteen's gone and they have no water and they begin to see mirages and they think it's water and they run and fall down and begin to throw think water up on them and what is it? A heap in hot sand. And that's the way the devil does. Sometimes he shows you a false mirage. And you think it's something great, but when you get there, you find yourself just heaping hot sands and sin up on you more than more. See, don't go at the devil's mirage. Let your faith anchor right in the Word of God. Stay right with it. See, like that. It's got to pull out. See, that sixth sense will, will, will defy any of the other five. We do The five's all right as long as they agree with the six. But man wasn't given to live by the five senses. He was uh, to let the five senses guide him. He was given, prone to, uh, born here to be led by the sixth sense. That's what God gave him the sixth sense for. That's God's place in the heart to lead us. So we are led by the sixth sense if we'll just let it. Now, if the sixth sense says that uh, uh, the the word is wrong, then don't you're not in the sixth sense. See, that's the five senses. But the sixth sense will bleed things that the five senses doesn't clare, declare. It's kind of complicated, but it, it's true, see, that the sixth sense is what we're guided by. I just out there just a few moments ago prayed for a dear old woman who's been laying there for four days waiting to be prayed for. And uh, such a thing, I tell you, just feel like or change it to a healing service somehow to see the Spirit of God move on like that. That poor old thing, I caught her by the hand and, and I seen what was wrong and well that what did you read now uh, uh, Luke yeah uh-huh. all right now I want to take a text out of that the Lord willing now if God is willing tomorrow night I promised I want to preach on the seal of God y'all like uh, teaching lessons like that Amen. the seal of God and then the mark of the beast the following night and tonight I want to take a uh, text out of this, uh, or uh, for a subject out of where he's read here, St. Uh, uh, Luke, uh, the 18th chapter, and he read from the 35th to the 43rd verse, inclusive. Now I want to take the 38th verse for um, a text. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And let's take it more like a little drama tonight. I'm tired a little bit in my throat. And let's just have a little drama of it for a few moments. Our, our scene opens on a cold spring morning. And it's at the walls, the old tore down walls of Jericho. And uh, there is a, a man sitting there, which we know to be a beggar, called Blind Barnimaeus of Bartimaeus. It would be either one, be pronounced all right. And so... Uh, in that day, there were many beggars, and all night long he had tossed and rolled, he couldn't sleep. Many of us know what them kind of nights are. Just no rest at all. And he'd roll from one side of the bed to the other, and there was no rest for the poor old fellow. And he'd got up late, so he'd come to his post late. Therefore, if, um, if they're not there early, the merchants and so forth coming in, there's so many beggars uh, and people, uh, incurables like blindness and leprosy and cripples and so forth, and people that were poverty stricken. And about the first beggar they met, they give him a coin and that just about settled it. That's all they could afford for the day. 
So he'd come to his place late. Let's say it's up about eight o'clock in the morning. And he should have been there about six. But the reason he's late was because he missed so much sleep. All night long he had rolled and tossed and couldn't sleep. He was dreaming all night that he could see again. He dreamed that he had his eyesight. And he'd wake up. He'd go back to sleep. You know, I believe God warns us many times in dreams. Don't you think so? He always has. And he promised in the last days that he would show visions and let them dream dreams. And let's think that Barney Mayus, and he dreamed that he could receive, he received his sight and he could see again. So when he got there that morning, he was late and all the merchants had done gone into the city and, and the great city of commerce as it was. But all, all of them went in, got early at the marketplaces to sell their goods and so forth. So perhaps he'd have to do without that day. He didn't, wouldn't have his coin for the day to eat by. And I can just imagine as many times we've pictured him, his old ragged cloak on like that, and his little old swiveled up arms and a beard all over his face and that gray and, and blind and along the road, kind of trying to get to the place before he sat down and begged. Each one had it their own private place where they begged. That's a pitiful thing. I've been in India and watched them there where there's, there's 470 million people in India and honest, I'd almost say 400 million are beggars. You, just everywhere is beggar, beggar, beggar and they each have their post and their place and some kind of little enchantment that they do to attract the attention of the tourists. And such a pathetic sight. And then we find him sitting there and after a bad night, well, he seen there was no one there so he thought maybe that he would sit down on a rock. You know, the walls had been torn down in his day from where Joshua way had went in and big rocks is laying out to one side. So he must have found his way out by the side of the northern gate that leads up towards Jerusalem. And he sat down there in the sunlight. And he was thinking, well, it's coming on springtime now. And I believe I'll just sit here in a warm sun. I'm chilly this morning and my clothes are thin and... I'll just sit here in the warm sun for just a little while and, and maybe there might be one left out that I could get my coin. If I don't, my family will, will be hungry today. And as he sat there, he began to think about his dream. Last night I dreamed that I could see. Oh, how the skies must look pretty. The hills are beginning to bloom again. Then his mind goes back to the time as a little boy. When he used to live around the bank there on the Jordan, and long in that early spring, why, there used to be the big buttercups that come up and the little flowers, how a little boy, how he used to roam over the hill and sit down and, and pick those flowers and lay out there in all of the morning and think of uh, how pretty the skies was and the big white clouds coming by in the springtime and uh, how the green was coming up how blue the sky and the Jordan in her swelling time, the snow coming down out of the Judea, and how the flowers is blooming. And then he would hear a familiar voice that we all like to hear, a sweet voice of a mother calling, Bontimaeus, my little one, your lunch is ready. And then when his father was in the field somewhere working, how he would come in. How that little Jewish mother would wait on the steps for him and pick him up in her arms and hug him and set him down to his, his dinner. And then after he got through, go out on the porch. And he used to sit out on the porch and how his mother would rock him and he'd have to take his afternoon nap. So how she'd rake the hair back out of his eyes and she'd look up and see those pretty big soft eyes of a mother and how she would kiss his little cheeks and say, oh, how I thank great Jehovah God for a nice little boy like you, Barnabas. You know, Barnabas, when you were born, I dedicated you to Jehovah. I've always believed that Jehovah would use you someday, Barnabas. He would use you for his glory. And then he'd think, here I am sitting here blind, not over maybe a mile from where I played and seen, and how could Jehovah ever use me? I'm blind. 
There's no hopes for me. But we don't always know. You know, God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. If we commit anything to God and believe it like our children or whatever more, let's believe that God will answer that prayer. Today, before I left to go away, the phone constantly ringing and the mothers with their children and saying, I pray for them. I said, now I just commit them to God. That's all you have to do. And don't put your hands on it anymore. Let God have it. If you're going to do something about it, then God will stand back. Let you go ahead and you get finished. But when you commit it to God and let Him have it, then He'll do it. You just, you just believe Him. Just stand back and don't work, but believe. That's where grace is imputed for righteousness. To believe that God will. Then he said, no doubt in his heart that he remembered how mother used to read him Bible stories. You know, it used to be mothers had time to read their children Bible stories. They don't have it no more now. They got to get the new car and get out and go at the ladies' a card party and, and everything. And mothers used to be, they had to pack their water from the spring and boil it on the outside. I remember my mother have a great big old iron kettle and do her washing outside. And um, she had more time now than a modern mother does just to push a button, like that, dirt washing, dishes, everything else, just push a button. But um, I don't think our modern convenience has got us anywhere. And what it is has made us awful lazy, killing us with heart trouble and everything else. Amen. Suzanne Wesley had 17 children. And with them 17 children... Back hundreds of years ago, she could still take from two to three hours a day and all of her busy schedule to read the gospel and pray for her children. What happened? She had a John and a Charles in out of there that turned the world upside down. Suzanne Wesley. I stood by her grave not long ago and put my hand on the stone. I said, God, give America some mothers like that. That's right. She produced a Charles and a, and a John. Uh, Wesley, Charles gave the world some of its best, best gospel songs. And John, uh, oh my, he was a, uh, surely a firebrand snatched from the fire. That is right. What a great man of God that he was. Now, but today with all of our modern convenience, and instead of reading the Bible to our children, we'll turn the television on and let them look at something that's not even fit for them to look at. Now, that's right. That's right. And another thing, we'll give them these little old comic books and little old uh, story books off of the uh, some drugstore mantle that oughtn't even be sold to make uh, make uh, kindling wood out of or fire out of, and yet we poke all that kind of stuff down our children's neck. While the American, I bet you this, and nearly every boy in America can tell you who Davy Crockett was, but I imagine there isn't one third of them can tell you who Jesus Christ is. And that's right. Or oh, the Lone Ranger or somebody like that or some movie star, they know all about it because it's laid before them and the Bible is a book that's put away and when the minister comes, they dig it out and dust it off and lay it up like that. It's never read. What we need today is some good old-fashioned mothers back to take their children back to prayer. That's the best remedy I know of to cure juvenile delinquency. That's right. It's good old honest mothers. I hear him talk about the illiteracy of the Kentucky mothers who up around in the part of the country where we come from up there. Now, they may be, they would, might not know right and left hand, but you let one of their girls come in one night with her hair all turned inside out and her clothes all off of her and lipstick smeared all over her face and like that and some little half-drunk sow's cigarette sucker bring her daughter in around daylight. I'll tell you, she won't be able to get out of bed for three months. I'll just guarantee you that now. Yes, sir, you talk about illiteracy. We, that's, we need more of them kind of mamas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That'll, that'll bring back discipline. In our home, we had the Ten Commandments. They hung over the door, hickory with all ten of them out on the end like that. And I tell you, we got our we got our education off of that. <laughs> That's right. I can see my father yet reach over and say, William, I said, Oh my I knew what was coming. But uh, I'm glad he did it. That's right. Barney Mayus would think of his precious little mother, how she used to tell him Bible stories about what the Lord did. She'd say, Barney Mayus, you know, we Jewish people by God's choice, He chose us to be His people because we loved Him and served Him. 
Barney Mayes, you may live to be a great man someday. I'm expecting you to be the king of Israel. I, I want you to, every mother's anticipations is for a child to be something great. And that's what she should be. And she said, I have prayed and I, when I knew you was coming to the earth, when God placed you under my heart, well, I, I gave your little life to God. And you know, I want you to serve this great God and go tell you how great he is, Barney Mayes. And, you know, we were coming up out of Egypt. We were slaves once. And he brought us up out of Egypt. High opened the Red Sea. Fed the children of Israel out of heaven by manna. Blowed in meat, quails for them. Give them water out of a rock in the desert. And all the great things they'd done. And all his little bright eyes would just say, Oh, Mama, does that still great Jehovah live? Oh, yes, darling. He's just the same as he ever was. He's still Jehovah. He used to love that story and tell about how that the children of Israel used to said right down there at the old ford, one day the great mighty Joshua crossed right down there with the children of Israel. Just around the city where we go get our groceries down there at um, Jericho, Joshua crossed right there, the great mighty warrior, the servant of God. How Moses stood down around top of the mountain, looked over into the swelling tides of the river, and how that... The unbeliever thought, this is a good time, we're safe. God is a poor engineer, pick this time of year to cross. But God sometimes just takes a worse hour to prove that he's God. Yes, sir. Look like he'd take him when the river, it brought him up there when the river is low. Ah, oh, that ain't it. He just wants to prove to you he is God. He, he likes to manifest his glory. And oh, I just love that. I just love that, to see him know that he's God. Then, one of the stories that little Barney Mayus likes so well was the story of the Shunammite woman. Because it had a little boy in it. You know, there's a little boy in there that, uh, and she'd tell about that great mighty prophet Elijah, how that God made him such a great mighty prophet. He lived out in the wilderness and didn't have many clothes and he wrapped a piece of leather around him and, and how he uh, was a great mighty man of God. Oh, he lived under the anointing of God. And he had passed through a certain city and there was a Shunammite woman there, and she was a kind woman. And she loved God too, although being a Gentile, she, she loved God. And I might say that she might have said to Barnabas, you know, uh, uh, Barnabas, we are chosen of God, but someday there'll be a great Messiah come. And when, he'll, when he comes, he'll be the one that'll call all nations, because this Shunammite woman... God is lovely to all of those who will be lovable. He wants to come and help those who wants to be helped. And Barnabas, uh, this great woman, she'd see this holy man pass through the city, so she wanted to show some favor to him because she loved God and she knew this was his servant and she wanted to help him and do something for him. So she'd, she'd see him coming and she would go out and bid him to come in and, and stay with him. So her husband was rather a rich man. So one day she said to her husband, You know, dear, uh, this great holy man of God comes by here and he goes up there to a cave where he's living, up in Mount Carmel. So as he passes through here, I believe it would be good if we built him just a little room on the side of our house. I believe that would be real nice if we do that because both of us believe in God and he is God and that's God's representative. That's the highest order in the earth now of God is his representative. So the husband said, I think that'll be fine. So they built the little house on there. And one day when Elijah and Gehazi, his, his servant, came by and they seen this little uh, room built on there and went in. They had him a nice little bed there and, and a little stool and some water and everything. So he said, go ask this Shunammite, what could I do for her? She's been so kind to us. Maybe we could return the, the kindness. Maybe she'd want me to speak to the king. Or maybe she'd want me to speak to the chief captain or someone. But you know, Barney Mayus, what that woman, she didn't ask for nothing. But when Gehazi come back, he said, I tell you, Elijah, the great prophet of God, the woman is barren. She has no children. She's never had any children. And say, Barney Mayus, you know, any mother wants a little sweet little boy like you are. See, that's the reason Jehovah's so good to me to give, you a, give me a little boy like you. And that poor mother wanted a little boy like you. So Elijah said, go tell her to come stand before me. 
And so, no doubt, but Elijah had a vision of what to do. So then when the woman came in, he said, according to the time of life, you're going to bear a son. And she went out, and you know what, Barney Mayus? That mother received a sweet little boy, this little Gentile boy, just like your little Jewish boy. How that mother loved that little boy. How she must have thought he was the sweetest little thing. And when he was about 11 years old, one day he went with his papa out in the field to, uh, to do the harvest. And I believe he must have got a sunstroke because he began to say, my head, my head. He got sicker and sicker. So the father being real busy with the hard hands, he had a servant to take the little fellow in and laid him on his mother's lap. She kept him on the lap till about noon and the breath all went out of him and the poor little boy died. Now, but Barnabas, I want you to notice what this Gentile woman now, what she did. She tucked him in and laid him on the bed of the prophet. Now there's a wonderful revelation. See, she didn't take him to his own bed, neither did she take him to her bed or the father's bed. She took him and laid him on the prophet's bed in the chamber where the prophet had slept. And then she said to her husband, you saddle a mule and you go forward for me now, told the servant, and don't stop. If anybody salutes you, don't salute him back, but you go straight to the man of God up at Mount Carmel. Now, said now... Her husband said, it's neither new moon or neither is a Sabbath, so the man of God won't be there. She said, all be well. I like that. When you got that real hold on faith, stay on that. That's a good lesson for all of you little Barney Mayuses now. Look. And then said, go, go forward. Don't stop the social calls and things. Just go forward. Just keep on going. Don't stop till I bid you stop. And of course, when he got close to Mount Carmel, when... Uh, uh, the prophet, you know, God don't reveal everything to his prophets. We all know that. He just reveals to his prophets what he wants them to know. And now, when he got close, Elijah walked out, probably old and maybe a little dim in sight. He raised up his hands and he said, Here comes that Shunammite. And she looks like that she's weary. But God has kept it from me. So he said to Gehazi, Go out and call to her. But she was pretty well speeding on. When she got there, he hollered, Is all well with thee? Is all well with thy husband? Is all well with thy child? And watch what that woman said. All is well. Amen. 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 See? Amen. She knew that God was in that prophet. That's right. She knew that's the highest order God had in that day. I think that's where Martha got the idea. She must have read that story. When her brother, Lazarus, died, she knew if God was in that prophet, God was certainly in his son. Uh, yeah. That's right. So she went to him and said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. I like that. I like that. See, that's startling. See, even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. This little boy sitting here, this mashed up foot. Another young fellow sitting over here, seen them both shouting last night. Must be Pentecostal boys. Must have God in their heart. You say, Brother Branham, I probably never walk again. The doctor says it won't. This over here is heart trouble. This with whatever it is. Whatever your trouble is. Say, well, the doctor says I won't. I won't never be able to get over this. I got cancer. I got tumor I got so and so but even now Lord whatever you ask the father he'll give it to you that's it even now whatever you ask God God will give it to you that must have been where Martha got that story the Shunammite woman said all is well now she wasn't asking for the boy but she knew that God was able to this prophet to tell her why he took the boy and that would satisfy her. If he could tell why he took the boy, everything was all right. So she was before God's representative and all things as well. I imagine little Barney Mayus' eyes are just brightened. Mama, Mama, hurry up, tell me what happened. You see, little boys get hasty. They want to find out what the end is. Well, the great prophet, after she revealed to him and told her her story, what the little boy had died and was laying in the chamber. Now the prophet said to his servant, Take my staff and go lay it on the child. 
Now, I think, again, in the New Testament, that's where Paul got the idea of taking handkerchiefs and aprons from his body. Now, Elijah knew that everything that he touched was blessed. But if he could get the woman to believe it, that was all. If he could get the woman to believe the same thing, a miracle would have happened just the same as ever if the woman would have had faith in what Elijah told her to do. But the woman's faith wasn't in the staff. I kind of like the way she said it anyhow. She said, as the Lord liveth and your soul never dies, I'm not going to leave you. I like that. Determined to hold on. That's it. If you start out for God, hold on until the Holy Ghost comes, until everything that you've asked for takes place. Just don't give it up. I'll not leave you. I'm on your hands, Lord, until you answer me. That's the way to do it. You know, Jesus taught it like that. He said, the unjust judge, you know, how he, he, he wouldn't uh, avenge the widow uh, of her enemy, but he said to get her off of my hands. <laughs> I'll go ahead and avenge her of her enemies. Well, how much more will your kind heavenly Father be willing to give you? But now not. He said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it'll be open. Now, and uh, ask. Now, if you notice, it isn't just, Lord, I want it. He that asketh, seeketh. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Just keep on, on. You've arrived there, so just keep on knocking until it happens. I believe it, Lord. I'm, I'm on your hands. I'm on your hands. And remember, the Lord healed me of stomach trouble. The devil said, you, you haven't healed. I said, just stick around and listen. Let me testify then. <laughs> if, you, if you want to listen. If you want to hear God be praised, just stick around and listen at me a while. He got tired and went on away, so he, he'll do it. The other day he tried to give me a bad cold. He handed it to me and I give it back to him. He handed it to me again I give it back to him again. And we just fought on it for three or four days and finally he went away. So there you are, see? Just keep handing it back to him. Just don't receive it. To give it back to him. Give it back to him. That's the way to do it. Just be determined. Hold on. That's the way she did. She said, as the Lord liveth and your soul never dies. Now see, she believed he had a soul that wouldn't die. See? As the Lord liveth and thy soul liveth. See? I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to stay with you. Well, I'll find out what happened. So he couldn't get her off, her hand, off his hand, so he just had to gird up his loins. And here he went. I noticed when he walked into the room, look what that prophet had to come against. He didn't know what the Lord was going to do. There was a father screaming at the top of his voice. All the people around the neighborhood screaming. That fine little boy, this lovely family, was dead, laying in the chamber. All hope's gone. Now, what did Elijah do? Just like Jesus did, put them all out of the house. Got away from where it was at, like Jesus did when Jairus' daughter was dead. And watch what the prophet did. He didn't have to go out and seek and pray and pray up and get ready. No, I, I believe we should stay prayed up all the time. Don't you think so? Yeah. You're not long ago, there's a little Irish woman coming over on a ship, they said. And about 30, 40 miles out somewhere out of... Uh, New York Harbor, there come a terrible storm. And the little ship didn't think they could make it. They sent out SOS. And so they told them the storm was getting worse and worse. If they could, if they could storm it for 30 minutes, they'd reach the, the, the harbor. But if they couldn't, they'd be in the bottom of the sea. So all the jazz music stopped and began to pray, play, Near my God to thee, and so forth. But all this uh, little Irish woman, she walked up and down the floor screaming and shouting, Hallelujah, 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 she said. The captain said, Did you understand me? said, Yes, sir, I understood you. said, Well, why don't you pray? She said, I'm already prayed up. So that, that's it. Be prayed up. Ready. That's the way we have to do it. And she said, I'm so glad. And she started shouting again. The captain said, What you shouting about? She said, You said if we held out 30 minutes, we'd be in New York. If we didn't, we'd be in the bottom of the sea. He said, That's right. Said, I'm on my road from Ireland to see my daughter in New York. I got one in glory. In 30 minutes now, I'll see one of them. So I, if the ship went out, she went up. Went there. So that's it. She can't lose, see? So she's just shouting anyhow. She knew in 30 minutes she'd see one of her loved ones. Oh, that's it. Be prayed up. Hallelujah. Old Elijah, when he got on the, on the ship, you know, or got on the platform of the little place where the ship built him, she walked back and forth across the floor. And he walked to and fro, the Bible said, in the room. Then after he felt the Spirit come on him, he went and laid himself up on the baby. And just laid there with his flesh upon the baby. And then he felt the baby's getting warm. So he got up, walked back and forth again through the room, to and fro. 
come back and laid himself on the baby again, and he sneezed seven times and come to life. He picked up the baby and said, call the Shunammite. And oh, how little Barney Mayus like that. Uh, he began to think, oh, when I used to hear my mother tell those stories. About that time he heard uh, uh, something clicking of a little mule coming. Must be kind of a rich man because most of the travel is on foot or by rich people rode a donkey and, and the army used chariots. And So he, he said, this must be a wealthy man. It's coming in late. So he raised up, threw aside his garment around and said, alms for the blind, alms for the blind, please. And he, the little mule stopped. And he heard a real grouchy voice said, Out of my way, beggar. I am the head of the ministerial association of Jerusalem. <clears throat> they tell me that there's going to be a... I'm the servant of the Lord. They tell me they got one of these here so-called prophets coming in down here today. Sees visions and so forth. They're going to have a healing service. I'm going to gather the whole council down here today. I've got to get these ministers together to see that we'll have none of that nonsense around here. Out of my way. I'm on the way of the Lord. Down the street went the little donkey. And so Barney may have thought, well, and that's the servant of the Lord. Well, he made his way back trying to find out where the rock was. Finally, when he found the rock, the sun had moved over a little bit. It became kind of chilly. The shadows of the wall was on the rock. So he moved out a little farther. And he said, well, I guess I have no coin for the day, so maybe I'll just um, just uh, wait a little while and maybe I'll sit down again. Maybe I'll continue my daydreaming of when I was a little boy. Then he remembered, too, that his mother told him that years ago that that great prophet Elijah and Elisha, the one that took his place, two mighty men of God come right down that same cobbled street arm in arm with one another. Going down to the Jordan, open the Jordan up. Oh, my. Passed right by within 30 feet from where he was sitting. But alas, the priest told him, all the days of miracles are past. Jehovah doesn't heal the people anymore, you know. That spirit never did die out. So they said, oh, Jehovah don't do those things more. We're just supposed to live good and, and pay our tithe and go to the church and at every meeting and then... That's all we're supposed to do. But Jehovah doesn't heal. He, he was Jehovah back there. But today he, he's not concerned about it. Oh, what a mistake. Yeah. He's always concerned. Yeah. If he ever was concerned, he's still concerned. Yeah. Yes, sir. He cannot change his motives. He cannot change his attitude. He's still Jehovah. I don't care how many says that he's changed. His people's changed, but he hasn't changed. The reason that we don't see him doing those things is because we won't let him do it. He's willing. We think we'll, we'll exhaust his bountiful blessings. We think, well, I asked God to give me my daily bread. I shouldn't have asked him too many things. Oh, my. Could you imagine a little fish about that long? Way out in the middle of this ocean saying, wait, I better drink of this water sparingly. I might run out someday. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine a little mouse about that big under the great garners of Egypt saying, I better allowance myself to one half a grain of wheat a day. I might run out before next harvest. <laughs> My, well, that would just multiply that by a hundred billion and you, you try to exhaust God's goodness and mercy. Yes, He's trying to force his way into you. Everything he can, ask abundantly that your joys might be full. He wants his people to be happy, asking great things, believing for great things. Amen. Your city sits on a hill, high ambish, ambitions, expectations. Well, mercy, if we see the blind receive its sight tonight, I want to see the dead raised tomorrow night. Yes, sir. And I, won't, I, I just keep on believing for greater things. When the church begin to receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, why don't you settle down on that? My, just keep moving on. Go on to the promised land. We're on our way to the promised land. Sure, just don't take this one thing. Say, well, we'll just have you spoken tongues. Well, you haven't got a great blessing that you got. Well, so you ought to be a million miles up the road from that right now. Sure. Greater things. High expectations. Certainly. Now... We find out now that uh, Barnabas had been told that the days of miracles was past. So he said, now, what if I was sitting here instead of hearing that man who called himself this day the servant of God? And what was that he said? He's going down to see about something. And what? wonder what's going on down in the city. Well, anyhow, 
The days of miracles is past, and that's the kind of servants Jehovah has today. It's a lot different from the one that Elijah was and Elisha. Now, if I'd have been sitting on this rock when Elijah and Elisha passed down by there, going down to the Jordan, and not but just a little peace blow where I'm sitting, that great prophet took his coat off, his cloak, folded together, and struck the Jordan, and she'd give away. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hundreds of years after Joshua had did the same thing. Hey, man, that showed Jehovah was still the same. As long as he can get somebody to believe he's the same. Yeah. Then after he got on the other side, now he was weary. He had fussed with Jezebel and them until he was about her painting up and carrying on until he was tired, just going home. And um, so the young prophet had to take his place. So he knew just across the river there was a chariot hooked to some bush over there somewhere. And he, he's going to take a little ride up home, you see. But the young prophet was watching for his new ministry, seeing what this old one is doing, so he knew he had to take his place. So the young prophet caught his vision and seen him go up, caught his garment, passed back down, picked up the same garment and struck the Jordan and said, Where is the God of Elijah? Oh, my. And she opened up again. That's right. Where is the God of Pentecost? Where is the God that was in Jesus Christ? What's the matter with the ministry today and the churches? I guess you read that piece in the paper. They just sent me somebody from the church here sent it to me. Where this Episcopalian minister up here said the, the virgin birth was only a myth and there wasn't such a thing as Garden of Eden and all that stuff like that. That man don't belong in a pulpit. Amen. No, sir. Ah, that's what's the matter with it today. That's what's take great educated people like that, stand up and they get so much education and you ain't got gumption enough to know how to hold it. That's all. What we need today, Paul said, I never come to you with excellently a word or education. I come to you in the simplicity with the power and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost that your faith would be rest upon the resurrection and the power of God and not in some smooth words or something of some uh, uh, so-called uh, bishop or something. Now, we find out now, just a little later, as uh, Barney may have sat there a little longer, wondering what would take place, then he remembered that two just below there, not 500 yards from where he's sitting, that great Joshua. Oh, my. That great servant of God who took Moses' place. That uh, come across the Red Sea and come across also was only two of the old group in the wilderness back there that believed that they could take the land. They looked at the Word of God. They believed the Word of God. Nine of them said, Oh, we can't take it. We look like grasshoppers up the side of them. The cities are all walled. It's an impossibility to do it. But not that fellow. No, sir, brother. He said, We're more than able to take it. Yeah. Why? It depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at your crippled hand, you'll still stay that way. If you're looking at your tumor, it'll remain that way. Look away from that. Look at the promise of God. It depends on what you're looking at. Christians look at the unseen. Abraham called things which were not as though they were because God said they were. That's the way real Christians do. No matter what the world says, what it looks like, that has nothing to do with it. It's what God said about it is what it does it. Amen. Yes. What was God told him way down in Egypt? I give you that land. But he didn't say, I'll go out there and sweep it all out and garnish the houses and hang up the curtains and everything. Y'all just move in. No, no. They had to fight for every inch of ground they took. That's right. Fight and take it by every fight, every inch. But he said, everywhere the soles of your foot lands, that's possession. Footsteps is possession. That's the same thing it is today. Divine healing belongs to us. The Holy Spirit belongs to us. It's our property. But you'll fight every inch of it. Yes, sir. But, brother, footsteps is possession. Just keep fighting. Take it. The devil say, the days of miracles pass. Say, you're lying. God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take it over. Everywhere your footsteps, that's possession. That's right. Joshua come right on across the river with him. Camped out there. Oh, blind Barney may have said, what if I would have lived in that day? Well, as soon as I seen them priests walking and Joshua with that sword up in the air walking across the... While I went down there and said, Great Joshua, pray for me. And I believe I'd have got my sight. That great man would have prayed for me. Sure. But alas, Joshua's gone. And God, I guess, is gone. And all the days of miracles has passed, so our priest says. So I guess it's just hopeless. There's nothing I can do. So hopeless. And then he said, You know what? After they 
come past the walls around Jerusalem many days. One day Joshua, that great warrior, was taking a little walk out one afternoon studying the strategy of how to take that walls of Jericho. How he was going to do it. He's seen that scarlet streak hanging down of Rahab. He's going to spare that house. Watching it. And all at once he looks standing out there before him. There stood another man with his sword drawn. Joshua pulled out his sword. And he ran to meet him. Challenged him in a duel. He said, are you for us? Are you for our enemy? He said, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the Lord's captain of his host. Joshua threw down his sword and took off his helmet and fell at his feet. Blind Barney Mayer sort of said, Oh, if I would have lived in that day, I'd run up to that captain of the Lord's host. And I'd have spoke to him. Little did he know that that same captain wasn't a hundred yards from him coming right through the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The captain of the Lord's host on his road through the city. You know, it's when we begin to think about him. That's when he appears. It's when Cleopas and them was thinking about him when he appeared. It's always when you let the meditation of my heart and, and let all my thoughts and let all my songs, let all that I am just meditate on thee, Lord, day and night. That's the way to get God close to you. Quit thinking about what the Joneses is doing and what you're going to do next week and all this thing. Just keep, just let, fill my way every day with love as I walk with the heavenly dove. Let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my way every day with love. That's right. Go right on down the road, no matter what school keeps or not. We don't return the teacher out. And just go right on, believing on the Lord. See, keep the meditations up on God. Think on these things. The Bible said, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. Yes. Well, our thoughts are always negative. We come in the prayer line. I notice we come in the prayer line. Oh, if, if you'll tell me if this... Oh. You never get nothing like that. No. You're so negative to begin with. Come like a... Come to the fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. That's it. Come with faith believing. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and a reward of those that diligently seek him. I'm not going to go through old Robert's prayer line and go through Tommy Hicks's prayer line and go through Osborne's prayer line and Alan's prayer line, Brian's prayer line, so-and-so's prayer line, go to this church and that church. Why, you're just wasting time. That's all. That's all. The thing to do is just, uh, just say and make up your mind that it's God and God said so and I'm going to meet His requirements and that settles it forever. Amen. God said so. I'll go right to my pastor and say, Pastor... The Bible tells us to call the elders of Norman R. Prayer when prayer face shall save the sick. That's all I have to know. Amen. I got a letter back from a little woman in Germany not long ago. She'd been crippled about 15 years with arthritis. Couldn't move. I sent her a handkerchief. We send thousands of them a month out. And so she got this little letter. We got a prayer chain around the world. So she, uh, she read this and she said, Now it says on here, if your pastor isn't there or if he's an unbeliever, don't call him. See, but if there's a neighbor somewhere that is a believer, call the believer, confess all your faults, ask God to forgive you of everything you've done, get everything right, then pray, put the handkerchief on your underneath the garment over your heart, then believe. So she met all the requirements <laughs> that was sent to her. And when she did, she put her hand over her heart. She said, now, old man devil, you've been in me long enough. Get out. And here she comes walking. <laughs> That's just that simple. It's just that simple to believe. You're in Arizona. Was out the Indian, the Apaches, and I always felt sorry for the Apaches. There they was out there that night, and they looked like an army sitting out there. And I began to speak to him about the Lord. And you know, Indian, he's kind of an odd fellow. He's like a mule. He won't eat out on the wrong straw, stall. So he listened to it. He thought it was fake first. And then he brought, I said, I called for the prayer line. Well, I heard somebody out there hollering, Glory adios. That was my Spanish friends. I know they'd have a prayer line if they was around. Because they, they always got faith to believe. So uh, there's, but they, this was for Indians only. And I looked around there, and the first thing, the Assembly of God woman back there, she had a little mission. I stand up on, a, on the steps like this, and all of them are setting out around. It's a beautiful sight. And so she had some back in there. They brought the first woman out. So she came out, great big wide wrist. She had a little baby on her back, and this little papoose back here. And I looked at her, and I thought, I'd try to find favor. I said, how about give me the baby? And she wouldn't go do that. So I was just catching her mind. I said, now, to the interpreter, I said she has a venereal disease, but it, 
And so the interpreter said that. She looked at me real strong. I said, now, it wasn't caused for me more living, but the way she had to live in dirt and filth like that. Well, she nodded her head. That was right. I prayed for her. Next was leukemia of the eyes. The Indians has much of it. And prayed for that one. Next come out was a, was a little girl, and she kept her head down like that. And I said, now, she's a little bitty fella about like that. It happened to be one of the chief's daughter. I said, now, the little uh, girl, I said, she's had a fever, and the fever made her go deaf and dumb. She can't speak or hear. And the interpreter said that, and the mother, that was right. Every bit of it was right. Then the Indians then began to look around at one another. You know, they began to see something they had never seen. So I said, now, I cannot make the, the girl to speak in here. That takes God. But I said, this is just a, the sign that he's here, that his presence is here. He has us anointed. And so I took the little girl by the hand, and I said, Heavenly Father, don't interpret the prayer. I said, let this deaf and dumb spirit leave this child. I got down to her, and I Done like that. She turned around and looked at me, then big black eyes. And I said, You say praise the Lord. She said, Lum, 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 or something like that. I said, She'll talk better. Her mother said, Her talk heap good right now. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> showing it. So then, Her talk heap good right now. And then the next was the mother. Then the next was a little old boy come out there. And I said, Well, do you believe that God, you speak English? No, she didn't speak English. I said, You believe that God will heal the little fella? And she reached down and uh, got him by the top of the head. They're real rough, you know, and his little old hair just as coarse as the mane on a horse. And so I uh, hold him like that. I said, he's got cross eyes. But you believe it got... She heard the interpreter say cross eyes, so she just got him by the nap of the head and pulled his little head back, little eyes sitting right in like that. I said, now, if you believe that God will straighten its little eyes, I said, then God will do it. And so the interpreter, I said, now, get it slow. They haven't gotten home. No sentence or punctuations. They start real low and go high, high, low. They just, you know how the Apaches are. They're the, um, was kind of a rough set of Indians. So then I said, uh, yes, it should be. I tucked the little fellow up. I, he was just like trying to tame a bronco. And I had a piece of chewing gum. I put it under his nose and let him smell it, you know. And I got him like this, got him in my arms, got the little fella up in my arms like this. I said, don't interpret this. I said, Heavenly Father, these poor people... This is really true Americans, and that's right. We're not Americans. No, we're not Americans. We're aliens who come and tuck the land away from them. They're real Americans. God gave them this land. We can tuck it away from them. I think it's a stain on the flag, the way we treat them. That's right. Sending money over there to Japan and all them places to blow it back at us like this, and our Indians laying out here starving to death. It's not right. Sure it isn't right. And then I looked, and the poor little fella... I had him on my shoulder. I said, Lord, let me find favor with these people. Straighten the little fellow's eyes. I was watching like this, and I seen a vision come before me. His little eyes are just as straight. I said, now, he had his head over my shoulder. I was patting him. I said, now, to all of you, hundreds and hundreds sitting everywhere. I said, now, if this baby's eyes are not straight, then I'm a false prophet. See? If they are straight, then I've represented Jesus Christ to you. I can't help what the government does to you. But I said, I know Jesus will treat you right. Now, you see if this is right or not. I tucked his little head around. You talk about a prayer line. I had one. (laughs) There was a stampede. And then the next one coming was an old Indian woman. And she had a, she used to be next. And all they were, just had, you couldn't beat them down. And there was a, there was an old Indian woman come out. She had two broomsticks with this, with a piece of uh, goods wrapped around a thing she had under her arm here. And she's trying to get out. And there's a little Indian boy jumped up on there, and he was trying to cut in the head of her. And we couldn't make him understand because he couldn't speak English. And Brother Moore, many of you know Brother Jack Moore, he just got him to the sides and packed him over. And I noticed the old woman, she come up close like that. They were believing then. Oh, you talk about a prayer line. So there this coming up real like that. And I watched her, and she moving these two crutches like this, and she'd take that foot, you know, and set it out, and then the other, and like that, just barely could move. I guess she's 80 years old. And she looked up at me when she got right close to me. And them great big deep cuts in her cheek. My mother's a half-breed. I don't know if you know that or not. But she's got them big deep cuts too. And I look when she come up like that. And the tears cutting the way down through them little pale looking eyes. As I thought somebody's mother. And she just looked up at me like that. And I thought, I, I, when I, before I pray for her, I thought, oh God. Look at that little chin shaking like that, the little thing. She looked at me, she started smiling. She just got one crutch and put it there and handed it over to me and went walking home. <laughs> yeah. See, simple faith, just to believe. I, I was going to try to pray for all, but oh my, as long about, uh, I had stopped the discernment then. So long about 
three or four o'clock in the morning. They was coming through wet, come up around like this, just as wet as they could be. And I said, what's the matter with them? He said, well, they thought first you were false. He said, now, said, they're going out in the desert and getting their loved ones. They're not going down to the ford. You're just wading right across the river with them like that. <laughs> so here come an old man, gray-headed. He had his own a board and had two sticks across it. And he had his legs laying across the two sticks and his arms across the two sticks. And he was shaking like this with the palsy. And so there's a great big fellow standing there, handsome-looking great big Indian. His lips just as blue as they could be and wet. And uh, I said, um, Aren't you afraid you take pneumonia? He said, Nope. I said, You talk English? He said, Little. And I said, um, Aren't you afraid you take pneumonia? Nope. He said, Jesus Christ says, Take care of me. I brought my dad. And I said, Hmm? Mm-hmm. I said, That's your brother? Yep. And I said, If I pray for him, you think he'd get well? Yep. He speak any English? Nope. I said, Pass him by. He put him by, I laid my hands up on his old head, shaking like that. And I said, Father, he worked a many hard day for these boys, and they've honored him. Now bring him across the river at this time of the morning to be prayed for. I pray that you heal him. I said, take him on. Bring your next one. First thing I heard everybody hollering, screaming. Look, the old man had the board on his own shoulder, going around waving everybody. Like that. <laughs> Long time. That's what it is. It's just simple faith to believe God. It's not some hocus pocus. It's just childlike faith. See, we we explain, come away from it, trying to explain it. Just believe it. That's right. That's the way this great, mighty uh, captain of the host of the Lord, he was there that night, the same as he was there. And you know, there's something other about it. Uh, where Jesus is, you always hear a lot of noise. I don't know why, but it, it's that way. Wherever you find Jesus, you find a lot of noise. Shoving and screaming. Some of them hollering one thing, Hosanna, Hosanna to the prophet of Galilee. Others saying, away with the imposter. Get him out of this city. We don't want him here. And some throwing overripe fruit at him and probably eggs the same way, you know, and going on. And he said, who passes by, said Barnabas. Who is it passing by? And they crowded over him and shoved him back. And maybe after a while, he shoved him down. He sat down, fell back for his rock again. People need to hear somebody saying, one is for him, one was against him. Same way it is today. Yeah. Some for him, some against him. Directly you heard that priest that he had heard go in. Saying, hey, you the prophet. You the one that said you raised a dead man named Lazarus. We've got a whole graveyard full of them up here. Let's see you go up and raise one. We'll believe you. Until you do that, you're a false prophet. He said, that's that same man told me he's going down to stop. Well, what's this all about? See? And he said, somebody tell me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me because... Uh, why, who's passing by? What's all this noise about? Nobody would listen to him. And after a while, it must have been a young woman. She seen the poor old fellow laying there. And she picked him up. She said, Sir, are you hurt? No, ma'am. Said, I-, I wish you would tell me what's all the noise about. Oh, she said, Jesus of Nazareth passes by. Well, who's Jesus of Nazareth? Are you not an Israelite? Yes. Well, you see, I am a servant of Jesus of Nazareth. You know, there's something about Jesus of Nazareth's servants. They're always willing to help somebody that's in need. They're always willing to stop and help somebody that's in need. God's servants does it. See, that I'm a believer of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, you know, this Jesus of Nazareth is the son of David. That The son of David... Well, I remember I was just sitting here thinking, and my mother told me that the son of David would come someday. Yes, that's he, the prophet of Galilee. A prophet? Yes. Said, do you remember that man down here in town they call Zacchaeus, the businessman? Yes, I remember him very well. Uh Uh-huh, he's given me coins before. Well, this morning, you know Rebecca, his wife? Yes, I remember Rebecca. While Rebecca's been praying, knowing that Jesus was coming to the city, while she was praying that that her husband would would receive him as a Savior. Yes, go ahead, speak on. Well, this morning, Zacchaeus is going out to see him, and he didn't want Jesus to see him. So he run down to the corner of Hallelujah Avenue, where it turns on Glory Road down here. And he... uh, he got the garbage can and set it down and climbed up a sycamore tree and sat down where two limbs crosses. Uh-huh. And uh, Rebecca told him that, uh, now, you are a Jew, and you know that when the Messiah cometh, he's going to be a prophet. He's going to be a God prophet, because Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. But, you know, 
You, you know Zacchaeus, how well he's, he's a, one of the businessmen here in the city. And he leans pretty heavy with the, him and the rabbi, plays cards together. And they have a, you know, they're, they're, things are pretty well. So they, the rabbi and all of them are said not to believe on that fellow because he wasn't a prophet. So Zacchaeus wanted to see if he was. So he climbs up in this tree and he got all the limbs and he drug them all around him like this. Camouflaged himself. And he had one great big palm leaf that he raised up so he could see him when he turned down there at Glory Avenue, you know, to see him come around. So there he sat up here in the tree, all perched up, and nobody knowed he was up there. And he said, now I'll see if he's a prophet. Now I look at his face. I know whether he's a prophet or not. I know what a prophet ought to look like. And around the corner come all the disciples, and here come the great big fishermen saying, would you stand back, please? Our master is very tired. We, we're sorry, we have to do this, but would you stand back just a moment and let him through. He's going up to Lebinsky's for dinner, so you'll have to, it's a restaurant up here, see, so you'll, you'll have to stand back. I'm sorry we have to do this, but honest, I hope there's not a Lebinsky here. So then, um, anyhow, I just I told you, it's just a drama. So going by and telling you, oh, step back just a little bit, and here come the others. And he, he raised up his leaf and he looked out and said, mm-hmm. what's them? Oh, oh, that's supposed to be his disciples, Rebecca told me about. Mm-hmm. I'll wait just a minute. And then after a while, he raised up the leaf again. So now let's see if I'm covered up good. Yeah, I'm sitting on two limbs. That's where two ways meet. And that's where a lot of people sit, where yours and God's ways meets. That's right. You got to make a decision from right there. So he, he's sitting on this limb, you know, and look, after a while, he's seen kind of a vacant space. And after a while, he looked coming around the corner. He raised up his leaf real easy and looked out, peeped out from the corner of it. And you know what? He looked him in the face. And as soon as he see him in the face, he said, there's something a little different about that man. I could hear him the way he talked and how compassionate he was. He, he was a different. But, you know, I'd have to know that he was a prophet because if he ain't a prophet, then he's not the Messiah because Moses told us that Messiah would be a prophet. So I've got him fooled now. I got a good look at him. I'm going back and tell Rebecca. You know what I got a good notion of doing? Jumping out of this tree and reading and giving him a piece of my mind. You know, you know how, you know. I believe I'll tell him that all the days of miracles just passed because Levinsky said so and all the rest of them, the Rabbi Jones and all of them said so, you see. So I know. I believe I'll do it. But I just better sit still because I'm covered up right good. So he walked and said, and, um, and what is your name, sir? I'm Barney Mayus. Well, Barney Mayus, he walked, he got right under the tree. And when he got under the tree, he stopped, looked up, said, Zacchaeus, come down right away. I'm going home with you for dinner. Zach, Barney Mayus, could you believe that was the son of David? Oh, yes. That will be what he'll do. Where's he at? He's done going way down the street there. Now, he jumped up and threw down his coat. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Yes, yes have mercy on me. His last chance there he was passing by. Done gone by, and how would he ever hear that poor old blind man? Insignificant, the people said, Sit down, sit down. Don't, don't be hollering like that. Sit down. He's gone down the road. Then it must have been that Barnabas said, He's the Messiah. I know he is. The only way that I'll ever be able to catch him now, if he's down there, I know that Messiah, when he comes, he'll tell us all things. We know that he'll be a prophet. So he must have fell on his knees and said, Jehovah God. If that is the Messiah, that's your son. I pray that you'll stop him. Oh, let him have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. What was it? Not his voice stopped it, but his faith stopped it. Watch thy faith and save thee, see? Watch. With all the burdens of the world, he was going right up to Jerusalem to be crucified. He knew it. All the burdens and sins of the world, every sin that was ever committed or ever would be committed, rested up on him. Think on his heart. Even the eggs and fruits and things just thrown at him, all the screams of, come up here and raise some dead. Show us a miracle. Let us see you do so and so if you're the Messiah. Let's see you that bunch of the, the ministerial association of Jerusalem, you see, or of uh, Jericho. Let us see you do something. See, it told you there's nothing to do. He don't mind devils. He don't yet, you see. So he, he just does as the Father shows him, he said. But that old blind beggar there said, Oh, thou son of David. And he stopped. Brother, I'd like to preach to you sometime. And he stopped. <laughs> yes, sir. He stopped. And when he did, he turned around. 
Now, his voice, he didn't hear it. Of course not. But his face stopped him. His face stopped him. And they brought him up. He said, what would it I would do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He said, thy faith has saved thee. See, if he had faith enough to stop him, faith to touch him, don't you see how that compares with the rest of Scripture? If he had faith enough to stop him, well, then he had faith enough to accept his healing. Thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith did it. And he went walking on with his head towards Jerusalem. Oh, my. Going on towards Jerusalem. I can see Brian Barney May standing there saying, He told me. He told me my faith. What faith? The faith that I believed that he was Messiah. How could he have heard me and me sitting way back there two or three hundred yards against that wall? And all of them screaming and carrying on and people acting the way they were. How? Well, I had enough faith to believe. And I stopped him and he told me, Say! I, I, I can see my hands! And the Bible said he followed him and rejoicing and praising God. The faith of one blind beggar stopped him on such a mission as that. The faith of one person here tonight can bring him from glory right to this building. Yes, sure it will. He can heal you. He can, he can give you deliverance. I read a little story on blind Barnabas before I close. My time's gone. But I'd just like to say this before I close. And we'll make the altar call. Now, notice just a moment. I read a story. It perhaps is fiction. Maybe it was. I don't know. But I was reading on blind Barnabas. said he had been blind since he was a, a young boy. That he went blind. But he was married. And he had a wife and a little curly-headed girl that he'd never seen in his life. And said one night he got sick. And they told, the story did, that he had a, some turtle doves that would... Um, Get out there, they'd do little tumbles over one another, and that would attract the attention of the, um, of the passerby. And they'd watch them little doves go do little tumbles over one another, and the people would stop and laugh a little bit and then give him a coin. That's the way they still do it. And so his little girl got sick. They had the physician out, and the doctor said, Well, said, there's too high a fever on the child. Uh, I don't think the child's going to live, Barney Mess. We have nothing to break that fever, so uh, I don't believe the child is going to live. And Barney Mass, he said, made himself out along the side of his little dubby, uh, adobe hut and stood out there and he said, Jehovah, if you will just heal my little girl and don't let her die, I promise you tomorrow I'll make you a sacrifice of my two little turtle doves. See, something you have to give up. People think today just because they do a little something, no, it's something that really hurts, something you have to dig way down to get. That's the kind of God sees. I'll give you my two little turtle doves and just go ahead without them. And said next morning his, the fever was gone. He went and offered the two turtle doves. Said sometime later his wife got real ill. And so the physician came and said, <clears throat> Well, I believe she's going to die. I don't believe she'll ever be well, Barney Mess, after waiting on her for a while. And said, No, I, my medicine won't help her. She's going to die. So he went outside the house again. <clears throat> And you know, these dogs that lead people today, I forget what you call them, seeing eye dog. They lead them with the dog. Them days, they said they had lambs that led them. And so Barney Mayus had a seeing eye lamb. So he said, if, uh, Lord, if you will heal my wife and don't let my precious companion die, well, I promise you tomorrow, I'll give you my lamb. And the next day, his wife is better. So he's going up to offer up the lamb. And said, the priest said, where goest thou, blind Barnabas? He said, I'm going up to the, the, the sacrifice to offer my lamb to Jehovah. I promised him that I would give him uh, my lamb because he healed my wife. He said, oh, Barnabas, thou cannot uh, offer that lamb. He said, I'll give you some money and you go buy your lamb and then offer that lamb. Buy the, the exchangers at the, out in the courts. He said, Oh, priest, that is good of you. But I never promised God a lamb. I promised him this lamb. That's it. I'll bring somebody else. I'll do a good deed. But what about yourself? I promised God this lamb. I promised God if he'd only show me his presence, I would believe him with all my heart. Not Miss Jones would believe him, but I'd believe him with all my heart. That's it. See? I promised him not a lamb, but this lamb. He said, Barney Mayus, thou cannot give that lamb. 
That lamb is your eyes. He said, if I keep my promise to Jehovah, God will provide a lamb for blind Barnabas' eyes. On this cool spring morning, God had provided a lamb for blind Barnabas' eyes. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. That same lamb is provided for every sinner, for every sick. God has provided a lamb for our spiritual eyes and for our physical eyes, for our physical condition, for our spiritual condition. He, Jehovah Jireh, that has already provided a lamb for our blindness, that we might, uh, uh, seeing the world, we might see it no more and look to him. Being sick, that we, we might know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Is there a sinner here who would like to say, Brother Branham, remember me. I, 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 I cry out, Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I, I, I want to receive my spiritual sight. I want to see you as you are, the true son of God. Have mercy on me, son of David. Would you raise your hands to him? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Up in the balcony, raise your hands. I want to see him. Uh, uh, oh, Lamb of God. Oh, thou son of David. God bless you, my brother, way back up there in the balcony. Someone else, some of the young folks, hear my little story about little Barney Mayus when he was young. You know, your mother perhaps dedicated you to God, too, when you were born. See, Barney Mayus finally fulfilled the commission that God had laid out for him when his mama dedicated him. Maybe tonight that your little eyes will come open, young folks, and you'll see the Lamb of God. Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. Would you raise your hand, someone else? Have mercy on me, thou Son of David. God bless this young girl. God bless this young woman. God bless this lady sitting here. God bless this little boy over here. Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. The man over here, yes, God bless you. Someone else, over to my right. Thou son of David, have mercy. Your faith can touch him. Bring him right down here to you, just the same as Barney Mayus did. He's not, and he, he'll stop and leave heaven to come to this Assembly of God church tonight to show you mercy if you'll just have the same faith that Barney Mayus did. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. But there'll be another somewhere in the building that hasn't raised their hand. There's been about 10 or 12 raised up their hands. That they wanted to have mercy upon them. Thou son of David. I noticed last night there's a little girl sitting here. Looks to be about 10 years old. She raised her hand a few moments ago. She wanted Jesus. About the age of my little Becky, I guess, at home. My little Rebecca. And I noticed a little girl come up last night. When she stood at the altar. No more than she stood there. She started speaking with tongues. Someone told me, some of the brethren, that she's run all over the church. Speaking in tongues and singing in tongues and everything. How the Lord blessed that little child. Get her when her heart's young and tender before she's pulled it through old true story magazines and the filth of the world. Got her little heart all calloused. I like to see little ones come. God, you dedicate your life to him. He'll do something for you too, honey. He sure will. Someone else now before we pray. Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Our heavenly father, I give them to thee. They raise their hands, they're your children, by faith in Jesus Christ. They know that you're here, Father. They know that you are the Son of God. They believe now that because that you spoke to their hearts, that they're ready to receive you as their Savior. Because you had to speak first, no man can come to me, said the Lord Jesus, lest my Father draws him first. And all the Father has given me will come. And now, Lord, they come tonight upon the basis of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. And as their priest or their, or their pastor or servant, I, I pray, Father, my prayer of faith goes to you. And to let them know that they are saved, I'm quoting to you your word. You said, He that heareth my word, I've constantly quoted it for the last hour or more. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath, present tense, everlasting life and shall never 
never come into the judgment, but it's already passed from death to life. Father, that's what you said. They raised their hands that they believed it, and they, they believed it, they've received it, so now I know that you have given them eternal life, and you'll raise them up again at the last day. You said you would do it. You promised you would do it. And you're God and you keep all your promises. Your promises is yea and amen. So you cannot go back on your promise. You, you said you would do it. And you promised to do it. Now, Father, I pray that you'll give them courage to let them know that that spirit that was near them saying, Child, you're wrong. You should receive me tonight. I'll stop in my great busy schedule and turn around and say, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Go and sin no more, as you have said so many times. You'll set it to them tonight because they made their decision. Now, Father God, I pray that you won't let one of them. I don't believe that they raise their hands just for the saying of raising their hands. I believe they were sincere. They really meant it. And now I commit them to you and ask that you forgive all their sins. I'm interceding for them with all my heart that you will forgive them their sins. Every sinner in here that you forgive all their sins father this little group i want to meet him there on that great day of the rapture when we get together see him come running from nation to nation getting together we which are alive and remain shall not hinder them which are asleep the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall rise first and then we'll meet them and then be caught up together with them to meet the lord in the air and forever be with him Lord, I know that you said that in the book of Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and I know it's true. And I'll meet them before we meet you. So we're so happy for this. And we believe now that I believe with all my heart that because they raised their hands and because that I prayed and asked and followed the leading of the Spirit the best that I know how, that they are forgiven of their sins. Now they're happy for it, Lord. Now there's one more thing you ask them to do. He that will confess me before man... Him will I confess before my Father in the holy angels. This will be a night that they'll never forget. These young folks of remembering that little Barney Mayus listened to his mother's story and know that someday God used him. And this is the hour that you're using them, using them and taking them into your kingdom. The older ones that raised their hands, they was the ones perhaps like Barney Mayus later on that was blind, but received his sight, his spiritual sight. Now, Father, I pray that you'll let them become your children tonight and will join some good church and and be baptized by Christian baptism and receive the Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. Now, with your heads bowed, I'm going to see and ask you that were deeply sincere, if you believe me to be God's prophet or his servant, rather, if you believe me to be his servant with all your heart and you believe that I've quoted you the truth, You heard the word. He that heareth my word, St. John 5, 24, and believeth on him that sent me. I preached the word. You believed on God. And you raised up your hand that you was a sinner and you did not want to be a sinner anymore. Then God said, no man can come to me except my father draws him. Then what draws your hand up? God. You made your decision. All right. Now what did he say? He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Then you are a Christian, if you really meant that. You young boys and girls, and you older, and you're middle-aged, and you're teenage, all of you. You are Christians when you believe it. Now, there's one thing yet you have to do. If you really believe that with all your heart, I'm going to ask you just to stand on your feet and say this uh, by standing up. You don't have to say one word, but just stand up that you might witness to the people that I now confess all my sins and accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, you that accept him that way, stand up to your feet. What about it, little girl that was sitting here? You believe he's your Savior? That's right. Stand right there, honey. Little boy over here. All right. You in the back. You up in the balcony. The little boy and girl in the balcony. Fine. Anywhere in the building now that accepted Jesus as your Savior, stand up. He that will testify of me before man, him that witnessed me before man, him will I witness before my Father and the Holy. Now, there's some of you older people raise your hand. Here's one, two, three, four. I'm looking at four children standing up on my little story tonight of Barney Mayus. Now, what about some of you older that raised your hand? Have you, you see how their little hearts are tender? They, they believe, and so they just stand up. Stand up to accept him. You believe they've forgiven? 
Sure they are. Certainly they are. Now some of the rest of you wants to accept him and say, I'll publicly make a witness. The Bible said, as many as believed was added to the church. Do you believe that Jesus forgives your sins tonight? Stand up to your feet with these children. How many will do it right now? All right. God bless you. The boy in the wheelchair, this boy here, this girl here, this lady. That's good. Fine. Someone else. Say, I accept him right now, Paul. Now, I don't, no feeling. I'm not looking for feeling. I'm looking because he promised me. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life and shall not come to the judgment, but pass from death to life. Upon those bases in your confessed sin and recognizing that you are a sinner and will rise and accept him as your Savior. Rise up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't there one more? One more that I could pray for you before you sit down. Is there one more? Any of you out there in the, in the hall that's saying, God bless you, lady. That's wonderful. All right. Is there another? God bless you, sister. All right. Is there another? There's seven. That's a perfect number. Now, let us bow our heads. Just remain standing. Our Heavenly Father, if your word cannot fail, it's eternal. You said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. You said so, Lord, and will not come into the judgment or condemnation at the judgment, but has passed from death unto life because they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died in their stead, taking their sins. And to their unrighteousness, they are made the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. There they are, Father. They're the trophies of the message. They are here. They're your children. Now, I may never be able to shake their hands in this earth. But, Father God, upon the basis of your word, I believe and accept your word. That you are God and you cannot lie and your word is eternal. I claim them for the gospel. I claim them for God's sake through Jesus Christ. Remitting all their sins. And, Father, pray that you will guide these children in the eternal life. Guide them to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Ba baptize them, Father, into the spirit and power of the body of Jesus Christ, that they might see it with their own eyes that you are the Son of God. They have believed it by faith now and accepted it. And on those bases, you said they were saved. I pray for them and commit them into thy hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, as you see the people standing, raise your head. The ones that's standing, I want you to shake their hands as they sit down. Up there in the balcony then, right here. You, you Christians near them now, yeah, as you're seated. Just shake your hand and say, God bless you. Shake this little boy's hand here. God bless his little heart there. Some of you mothers sitting there. Right here, that's right. God bless you. God bless you, brother, with the broken foot there. Don't worry, you'll be all right. I know that a couple nights ago, so just don't worry about that. You're all right. So, up there in the balcony. All of us, see, it's, it's all all right. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Amen. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Said, Brother Branham, do you believe that to be the truth? Well, certainly I believe that to be the truth. I wouldn't stand here and preach something I did not believe. I get in trouble all the time by preaching things I do believe. That's what it is. Uh, but I believe it because God said so, and that settles it to me. I believe it's just that those people, that little girl and little boys and these people here, called him from glory just the same as blind Barney may have stopped him on the road. You believe that? Amen. How many of you sick? Raise your hands. Just sick of me. Amen. How many believe that that same God? I don't know. All right. I, 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 something struck me then. He's here. The angel of the law that you see in that picture, God being my judge at the day of the judgment, you'll find out he's right here now. That's right. The angel of the Lord is here. Somebody somewhere, somewhere is suffering. They've got faith. Something's moved. Somebody has done something somewhere or done something. He wouldn't have come like that and me trying to hold this to a gospel service. you have any prayer cards? You don't? Well, you don't need them. You don't need them. You have faith and believe. If I've told you young converts, here, 
being his share. Oh, friends, you'll never know what a feeling that is when he, when he strikes you. You know what you're talking about then. That's right. Yes. You know what you're speaking of. Oh, I'm just as positive as I can be. You have faith now. Just believe. Sarah sat in the tent. And she said within herself, she laughed. And the angel turned and said, Why did Sarah laugh, saying within herself that this couldn't be so? Is that right? How about the woman that touched his garment? And he looked, Don't you believe he's that same high priest tonight? And you young converts, I want to prove to you that that one that you touched, Sister Honey, here, you and the, young, the sister sitting here and the brother, the little boy and a little boy and girl sitting over, I want to show you that it was the same Lord Jesus that made the promise. Oh, my. Oh, I wish I could feel this way all the time. I have faith in God. Pray, all of you. Just be in prayer. I'm going to turn my back to you. What that angel of the Lord did to show you we're in the days of Sodom, to show you we're at the last day, that this country here is a modern Sodom, to show you that the angel of the Lord is still the angel of the Lord. Now, you have no prayer card, so you won't have no prayer line. But you don't have to have prayer cards. The only thing I ask you to do is believe that I've told you the truth, the gospel truth, and it's God. I look at these ministers. Now. You believe this, brethren, with all your heart? You believe the gospel I've been preaching is the truth? God bless your heart. There's an awful good feeling behind it. Faith of you, brethren. A lot of times this week I've chopped and cut and everything else. I don't want to think I've hurt you. I love you. You're my brother. But you yourselves know that the church is moving away. we got to bring it back. Bring it back. We've got to bring it back. Now, here it is. There's a woman before me. I'm looking right at her. Somebody out there is touching the high priest. See what she looks like here. Just for a minute, somebody touched him. Just the same as a woman touched our Lord Jesus. That's what this woman done. Now I'm just acting in his place, you see. Have all, are you understanding? Yes. Now this be I'll catch it just a moment as soon as it comes from the now somebody touch him. Each one of you is praying. Believe now with all your heart. Set real quiet. Believe. Yes, sir? It's a lady sitting right over there in a the corner. Yes. That's right. You have a prayer card? No, you, I know you don't have a prayer card. I don't know you. God does know you. See, can't, I want all of you look this way. Can't you see that light hanging over the woman there? See that, that little, just right above her. See that mystic-looking light hanging right above her there? Now watch, it's opening up. The woman has been examined by a doctor of some sort, and they told her she had a growth, some sort of a... She's pending an operation, but she won't receive the operation. She's trying to trust the Lord for her healing. That's right. Raise up your hand, lady. Now, you young converts, that lady sitting right next to her there, she seemed to be a, a light moved right over to that lady sitting right by. There it is again. I thought it went back to the lady, but it went to that lady. She's a believer, a Christian believer. She's got some kind of a, like an allergy of breaking out on her hands. That's right. I don't know you do, a lady. You don't have any prayer card, of course. You believe that you're going to get well? Do you believe that was God? You you believe that that I can tell you what she's praying about? You believe that by God? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Sit down. Believe. You believe? Mrs. Vossler, you believe now that you're going to be made well? God bless you. 
That's who you are, isn't it? What about you, little fellow, sitting right here? Here it is, right here to you. Do you believe? I see you're kind of stooped in your shoulders. That's that. But there's something else besides that that's wrong with you. If God will tell me what's wrong with you, will you believe me to be his prophet, his servant? It's a stomach trouble you're suffering with. That's thus saith the Lord. That's right. Mm. Not at all true. You're just nervous and upset in your stomach. It's like that. That's exact. If you believe with all your heart, you believe? Now be real reverent. Don't move, you see. Anytime you move, that, that, that does something, you see. Be reverent. What about somebody in this direction here? Let's come over here. Now let's go over here. You believe? When we get three or four, say, say something. Have faith. Don't doubt. I just have to watch wherever. I, I wish I could just say this or that. I can't. I just have to watch. Faith is so unconscious to people. Little lady sitting right there looking at me. Oh, the right behind you, sister, right? Yeah. Got trouble with your eyes. That's right. You, you believe he'll heal you of that? If you don't, you lose your sight. She's getting dimmer all the time. You just believe with all your heart. You believe God can tell me who you are? You know I don't know you. Miss Johnson, you can go home be well. The lady sitting right next to her. You had to get up and go away a few minutes ago. Satan tried his best to rob you from this. You believe God can tell me about your trouble? Would you accept me as his prophet or his servant? You believe that with all your heart? I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. But you really got a contact with God right now. That's right. You're very seriously ill. That's right. It's a gallbladder condition. That is right. Another thing, you have an enlarged heart. That's exactly right. Ms. Miller, <clears throat> raise up your hand if that's right. Go receive your healing. Jesus Christ makes you whole. I challenge you to believe that. I, I, just, I just ask you to believe it. All right. Have faith in God. Do you believe him? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Do you believe him with all your heart? Then hear me. Listen. How many believers is here? Raise your hand. All right. If you're a believer, now put your hand down. Every one of these believers. How many sick? Raise your hands. All right. Believers, lay your hands on one another. I'll quote the same word. These signs shall follow them that believe. This is it. Do you believe it? Now you pray for somebody. You lay your hands on somebody by you, around you, up there in the balcony. Yes, believe. That lady sitting out there in the middle there suffering that nervous condition. Cosma, all right? That's it, sister. I don't know you've never seen in my life. Is that right? But you've been nervous all for years. Christ heals you, makes you well. We have to learn about it. Amen. He heals every one of you if you believe it. Now pray for one another. Lay your hands on each other. Heavenly Father, the faith of this people brought the Lord Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost back into their midst tonight. Saving the lost and healing the sick. Oh Lord, they are believers. They got their hands on one another. They believe that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and the same God. Oh Jesus, thou Son of David, they're screaming out. May the power that raised up Jesus from the grave raise them to their feet with the testimony, shouting and praising the glory of God. May they stand like Bonnie Mayers, looking at their hands until they see that the power of God has healed them. Reign it, Lord. Keep praying, keep praying, just keep praying. Oh, Lord, there's only one thing to keep a spontaneous healing service. And that would be unbelief. I notice around over the crowd, as I look out through here, Lord, see that little streak of dark trying to hold back that glorious light yonder that's circling around, trying to find its way down through that darkness to touch somebody. Oh, Father, God, 
Give me strength. Give me faith. May the people understand that you have proved, Lord, that I'm telling them the truth. You said when you were here on earth, if I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. And if I do not the works of my Savior, then may they believe me not. But Lord, you are doing the same works that you did when you were here on earth. Oh, Father, I pray now that they do believe in a potion. Give me faith to break that brightness from over them, Lord, that that power and light of God might fall upon every soul in here, that it might heal every one of them. Satan, you're exposed. Why, you're a devil, and you're trying to hold this group of people. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. 